Hello, this is Dan Alford with ARC Specialties. We're into month one of the COVID lockdown, but that hasn't stopped us from continuing to do additive manufacturing and report on the results. If you recall, not too long ago, we were doing some aluminum parts and we had pretty decent tinsel specimens, uh, 37,800 PSI tinsel, which was right in line with what you'd expect with 5356 aluminum. Several of you guys have asked us to do some heat treatable aluminum, so that's exactly what we did. We made some additive manufactured parts out of 2319 aluminum, which is a coppered alloy aluminum. And those you can actually solution heat treat and age, which is what we did here in the laboratory. And our results are quite good. We're up to 63,000 PSI tinsel. This is up to steel levels. So now we have a material that weighs a third as much as steel, but has equal strength. So making progress and the answer to the question, can you weld heat treatable aluminum alloys for additive manufacturing? The answer is yes. So we're getting good tensile properties out of our additive manufacturing with non-heat treatable 5000 series alloys, typical numbers in 30,000 PSI range. And with heat treatable 2000 series aluminum alloys, we're up above 60,000. So we wanted to do some additional work on fatigue life. Haven't seen anything reported. So here's our first report on fatigue life of additive manufactured aluminum parts. I do a class for the local college here in town, and I, I started out with this question. I go, if you have a part made out of half inch aluminum, and it's spinning at 3,600 RPM, and it's deflected 5 eighths of an inch out of, out of alignment, how long will it last? Kids say they don't know, so you know, we, we calculate all that. And so we use that same machine that I used for that demo to test some of this aluminum. So let's go do the math real quick. First thing you have to do is understand the problem. We have a motor running 3,600 RPM. We have aluminum shaft that's 12 inches long, but instead of being aligned properly, it's deflected 5 eighths of an inch, 0.62 inches. So that, that simulates having two bearing blocks not quite in alignment. So what does that mean? Well, first thing you do is calculate the moment of inertia, you get a number, and then we calculate the force to deflect it. How much load did it take to deflect that beam? It's quite low, it's only 27 pounds. And so, you know, that's not much of a load at all. But this is what we're really interested in, maximum stress. If you calculate the maximum stress that this deflection causes, it's up at 25,000 PSI. Once again, this is well under our tensile strength, but this is a fatigue problem. So that's why we built this fatigue testing machine. So if we know the maximum stress and we have an SM curve for that given alloy, this one's for 6061T6 with 25,000 PSI of stress, it should be about 12,000 cycles to failure at 3,600 RPM, that's three or four minutes and the parts tend to break right on schedule. But this case, we have an additive manufactured, non-heat treated 5,000 series part and we're going to determine the fatigue life. We've already got the part loaded in. We have the shaft deflected 5 eighths of an inch. We simply turn the machine on and wait for it to break. So the part lasted 5,500 cycles. That's about half as long as we get from a heat treated 6,000 series part. But this is an additive manufacturing 5,000 series non-heat treated part and we're just starting to develop data. We didn't really know what to expect. So in the future, what we're going to do is make another 2,000 series part, heat treat it, and then fatigue test it. So look for that in future videos. At Arc Specialties, we thrive on problems. Send us yours.